It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope? Larry Lasser from the CBS Television News staff and Louis Banks, an associate editor of Time magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Stephen A. Mitchell, chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Well, this is a time, as all good Americans know, when the straws whirl faster and faster in the political winds, a time when the chairman of both parties usually declare they can foresee a trend. So we'll ask our guest tonight, Mr. Mitchell, as chairman of the Democrats, do you really foresee a trend? Yes, I think so. The uh, difficulty is I see two trends. One of them is, uh, I, I think, clearly definable, uh, that favors the uh, Democratic candidates and the Democratic Party over the Republican Party. But the other one uh, disturbs me in that I keep hearing of of uh, apathy and uh, of lower registration in some areas than we should like. Well, do you really think there is much excitement about this election and won't a low registration actually hurt you? I think that a high registration helps the Democratic Party. I think the people of this country are predominantly Democratic. Uh, I believe that the situation changes in part to some degree from one place to another. and. It isn't, it's pretty dangerous to generalize, I think, Mr. Lesseur. Mr. Mitchell, what uh, issues do you feel that have given you this kind of new strength that everybody is predicting for you? Uh, what particular issue? Anyone? Well, I think there are a number that uh, uh, weigh pretty heavily with people. Uh, one is, uh, of course, the economic uh, issue. Uh, whether people feel that they are better or worse off with uh, the Republicans in power, and most of them are satisfied that they are worse off or that uh, they are uneasy, a little apprehensive about the future. I believe there is a basic issue as to whether people feel that they, our country is more or less secure at the present time than we were in 52, and I think that they are uneasy again, that we feel that they are less uh, secure. Uh, there also has been a growing anxiety on the part of the many people uh, of modest means or average means that there has been favoritism shown by the uh, Republican Eisenhower administration to uh, special groups, uh, to big business. This was emphasized, I believe, very decidedly uh, by the Secretary Wilson remarks uh, lately by the Dixon-Yates uh, deal, by uh, the tax bill, uh, which favored people who receive dividends as against those who uh, earn their money by working in a factory or uh, by wages or salaries. Well, now, you've made Dixon Yates pretty much your own trademark. Uh, that's regarding the TVA contract. Pretty much by just asking questions, are you ever going to be prepared to step up and offer testimony or facts in that case? Well, I've been prepared, and I uh, suggest to you I have been very direct and very uh, positive and explicit in the statements that I have made, and they have been borne out in every single instance, from the beginning by uh, the testimony that has been given uh, before the anti-monopoly subcommittee under a Republican, Senator Langer, uh, by the news that we've finally been able to get through leaks or by the activities of newspaper men about the various drafts of the contracts. And I, of course, said I was ready when Chairman Cole asked me to testify. I said, of course, I'll testify any time or any place. And then well, he... Mr. Mitchell, if you win control of the Congress in November, the, uh, that bill, what will happen to it? The Atomic Energy Committee has never signed it, have they? No, they've, uh, they've finally established, uh, they've set the hearing for November the 4th. I was going to say that they set the hearing for the end of early in September, and then they advanced it to August, and then they canceled it. Now they've put it beyond uh, the election. I'm going up to Binghamton, New York, and make a speech which is 
in the town that uh, Chairman Cole uh, lives in. It's in his congressional district on Saturday night. I'll have some more to say about it. But I don't, well, I think in answer to your question, Mr. Lesser, I do not think that Dixon Yates is ever going to build that plant. Well, you know, here's something I don't understand. Uh, Senator Fulbright, who is certainly a good, loyal Democrat and uh, with a great deal of integrity, has said that this is a very fine contract and he's quite happy with it. I think he's misinformed. Uh, I think that uh, you should also have in mind that anyone who lives in Arkansas is not unaware of the fact that there are certain benefits to Arkansas from having the proposed plant built in that place. But I, uh, uh, I'm sure that Senator Fulbright is entitled to disagree with most of his colleagues, just as Senator Cooper, a Republican, disagrees with the Republicans. Senator Cooper is very uh, anxious to align himself in opposition to the Dixon Yates contract. Mr. Mitchell, uh, may I ask you a question about what you actually do? Uh, now, a national chairman masterminds the, uh, a national campaign because this is a, these are local campaigns. But what else do you do besides make speeches as national chairman? Well, it seems that uh, uh, I have uh, a part of the responsibility for raising the money which, uh, on which we carry on these activities of the party. Uh, the, it seems to me I'm in airplanes or speaking a good bit of the time, it's true, but a lar actually a large, the largest part of the work is in maintaining contact with candidates and with the leaders of the party and in administrative work in the uh, National Committee You brought office. up a very interesting subject there, uh, money. How's the money coming in for the Democratic Party? Coming in a little better. We're still a long way behind, and we, of course, will never match the Republicans, but we're... Uh, uh, doing a little, a little better, and we've been very much heartened by the response that people have given us lately. Uh, that brings up a, another point, though, that shows, uh, illustrates the point I made to you about the favoritism of uh, uh, the Republican administration to uh, big business. I got a, a letter today uh, that was sent to us by a Democrat who had been solicited by some Republicans. Uh, for a contribution to the Republican citizens for Eisenhower. And this letter came from Atlanta, says that businessmen are solidly behind our efforts to keep a Congress sympathetic uh, and more favorable, maintain a more favorable atmosphere for business. And in it, they had a little uh, envelope that says the story in a nutshell. And in that, they have a peanut. And then they say, the money we are asking from businessmen is just peanuts compared to what electing a Republican Congress can mean to business, your business. Uh, there is the, I'd say that's the, in a nutshell, is uh, the philosophy of the Eisenhower Republican uh, administration. Well, what Not about thinking the of the people as a whole and their preference to business has uh, served them, I think, has put them under suspicion with the electorate generally. What about the popularity of the president himself, Mr. Mitchell? Do I you think feel that's been affected too? I think it's been affected. I think generally that uh, most of the people of the country who voted for him uh, or who didn't vote for him wish him well. They'd like him to succeed. They'd like him to be president of all of the people. It's, uh, they sort of identify themselves and our country's well-being with having the uh, president get along well. I don't think he's going to make much difference in this campaign. He hasn't so far, and I don't think he will. I think he may get hurt if he gets into it a little deeper. Talking about the philosophy a moment ago, uh, early in the campaign, you disassociated the Democratic Party from the Americans for Democratic Action. Do you think that that's given you an extra strong push in the campaign? No, I, I made it clear, as I think I should, and I think that they would uh, wish to do, that they are a separate uh, organization, that they're no part of the Democratic Party. I made it clear, I thought, that we're glad to have their support as that of any group of loyal Americans for our candidates or our principals whenever they agree with them. Well, They're Mitchell not running us and we're not running them. I don't think they've made any difference. Mr. Mitchell, if you do win... I mean, in, in our, in our uh, activities. If you do win in November, uh, what uh, element of the party you expect will be in control, the conservatives or the liberals? Well, I don't think you can answer that question in those, uh, those terms at all. I think that the Democratic Party essentially is a liberal and progressive uh, political organization. I think there's a place in it for conservatives, 
Uh, indeed, uh, uh, there is a... Uh, it wouldn't amount to much if there weren't people of differing points of view. Well, look at another way. Do you think that a Democratic victory would mark an upsurge in the strength of the uh, old guard Republicans? I do. I do. And I think that's, that's a very important point. I think that there's a, a wide misconception uh, uh, that a Republican victory would somehow help President Eisenhower. Actually, the Republicans who are running for office, whose names are on the ballot, would say, why, this is a mandate for us. Why, see, we, this, the people like what we're doing. And have more than half of them are opposing the president. Well, if the Democrats do win in November, are you people going to be uh, friendly to the Eisenhower program, or are you going to be uh, hostile to him on the grounds that uh, well, he depends made on what run part of 56 the, or not? Well, what part of the program you're talking about or he proposes. A uh, great many of the uh, parts of the uh, congressional uh, record received uh, support of Democratic uh, votes that couldn't have been enacted uh, without them. There are many on which they were opposed, and I think that same thing will happen again. Mm -hmm. I certainly do not think that uh, uh, there will be a disposition to oppose for the sake of opposition. Oh. Uh, we, uh, Speaker Rayburn and Mr. Uh, Mr. Senator Johnson made that clear that uh, we reject the suggestion that there would be a cold war between the president and the uh, Congress. It takes two to make a war, and we don't propose to uh, enter into one with the president of the United States uh, on political matters at the expense of the American people, surely. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mitchell. Very glad to hear what you had to say tonight. The opinions expressed on the Longine Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and Lewis Banks. Our distinguished guest was Stephen A. Mitchell, chairman of the Democratic National Committee. <coughs> to own a Longine watch is to own one of the finest watches made anywhere in all the world, and yet unbelievably, a Longine watch is not expensive. There are many outstanding models of Longines watches priced as low as $71.50. The choice of styles and of models is almost unlimited. For ladies, Longines creates superb examples of the jeweler's art, exquisite in taste and finish, perfect for every dress and for every occasion. Now for men, Longines produces watches for every requirement, watches for dress and for sport. Longines automatic watches, the most advanced in the world. Longines waterproof and shock-resistant watches for rugged service. Longines chronograph watches for sportsmen and scientists, and every Longines watch, whether for a lady or for a gentleman, is made to the unique standards of excellence, which have won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. And this statement is true throughout the world. The Longines watch on your wrist is not only one of the finest watches made anywhere in all the world, but equally important, it's the watch of highest prestige. And unbelievably, you may own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches.